Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased to be here in Bayern on the Swiss military airbase in the canton of Fribourg for our first interview ever in the Solar Butterfly. And my guest today is my good old friend Raphael Domjean. Raphael, it's a big pleasure seeing you again. And uh, we are very pleased to be here in your hangar. You want to show us your solar powered airplane. I'm very curious to see that. But first of all, let's talk about our story that we have. Uh, we met 15 years ago, right? Even more, maybe, than 15 years. It was in 2007. In 2007, we met in the United States and that was uh, on my world tour. I'm very pleased to see you again. Yeah. That's us. Look at this. Hey, yeah. in 2007, in Pennsylvania, uh, we drove... I am older now. You did not change, uh, <laughs> Louis. Still the same. We drove about one week from Toronto in my solar powered car when I was on my world tour with solar power all the way to Washington, to New York. New York, Washington, to New, New York. York. Yeah. yeah, to New York. Yeah. And that was a great time with you. And, uh, and then tell me, what did you do after that, after our journey? Well, first of all, it was for me my first solar adventure. And it was with you. It's a very nice memory for me. I learned a lot with you, Luis, for my next project for, for the Sun 21. Then I did the first time on the world with a solar boot, with Planet Solar, between 2010 and 2012. After I went also to the Northwest Passage with, uh, with the solar kayak, mm -hmm. and now we are with Solar Stratos. Mm -hmm. uh, the final goal is to go to the stratosphere powered by solar energy. It's the dream of ICAR, but 4,000 yeah. years later. Yeah. And we did already some uh, big firsts with the plane. Uh, I jumped from my aircraft. It was the first jump from an electric aircraft, and it was also the first uh, solar free fall, you know, because the uh, energy that we need, that we use to go to the air was solar. Yeah. So it's a mini first that we did already with solar stratos. You're a real pioneer, real, real aventurier. Uh, we say here in the French speaking part of Switzerland, you have done lots of adventures to promote solar energy. You went around the world as the first person ever in a solar powered boat, right? It took you how long? A little bit less than two years. We yeah. start in September 2010 mm -hmm. in Monaco and mm -hmm. we were back in Monaco in uh, the 4th of May 2012. So almost, almost two years, one and a half years. Yeah. More or less. Yeah. 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 And, and we met. Remember maybe we met in Cancun of course. Of at course. the COP in Cancun in 2010. Yeah. Uh, you came on board uh, with you. You were in another race. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, 80 mm -hmm. days around the world with the zero. I don't remember the name Z of the zero race. race. Zero, zero race. race yeah. Yeah, very nice memory also. Yeah, that, that was great, great time. So he had a fantastic boat. What's the boat doing today? So the boat today is uh, in uh, Dubai. Mm -hmm. The name of the boat today is MS Porima and is still going around the world for another world tour uh, to promote uh, solar energy, renewable energies, wow. also wow. wind yeah. uh, energies. Now there is a kite, there is hydrogen on board. Uh -huh. uh, so he's, he's still, still uh, doing what we what we uh, did with Planet Solar. This is the never-ending story yeah, of your solar boat. And today, Rafael, tell us more about your project that you have today. You want to be the first man ever in a solar airplane to go into the stratosphere, right? And uh, when, when is this going to happen? Uh, so we are on the track, of course, uh, solar boat is difficult. Solar aircraft is even more difficult. Yeah. So now we are on the way. Uh, we expect the, maybe to be able to try to, to join the stratosphere in 2024. In 2024. And yeah. tell us a little bit more. We have just seen your airplane in your hangar. It looks amazing. Uh, some technical features of your airplane. Yeah, it's a solar aircraft. It's a two-seater, really mm -hmm. light aircraft. It's lighter than a, than a glider, less than 500 kilo with the battery, wow. with everything. So wow. it's a really light aircraft, 25 meters wide. Yeah. And uh, it's a really good aircraft. We can uh, fly probably, if you have sun, uh, almost 10 or 12 hours. Wow. Uh, if you have the sun, of course. Without sun, it's two hours uh, of flight. But it's already a lot for an electric aircraft. You're a real pioneer for zero emission airplanes. Your vision is that we can all fly around the world or fly from one country to another with zero emissions, with solar energy or hydrogen or whatever. What can you tell our spectators? What is your personal feeling? How long will it take until flying with electric motors, solar energy on the wings will be possible? One day it will be possible, of course. Uh, I trust that uh, to fly 
uh, with uh, electricity or with hydrogen would be the more difficult things that we will have to achieve. Mm -hmm. So I think it will took a little, like uh, 15 or 20 years before yeah. it will be possible to go from Geneva to New York yeah. with an electric or more icing for this type of aircraft, hydrogen aircraft. Uh, with the certification, with all the safety, mm -hmm. it's, it's a big challenge. But it's already possible today to learn to be a pilot with an electric aircraft. And this is a big step already. Huh? We can yeah. fly with the Pipistrel Velis, a little bit less than one hour, uh, with only 20 kilowatt hours, so it's uh, cheap and uh, without CO2, but also it's without noise. It's really, yeah. really nice to fly in an electric aircraft. So you say the first aircraft is already available on the market. You can buy it. Private pilots can buy to fly around in their own countries. Flying one hour is possible with electricity. Yep. That's already possible. So it's already possible. I invent you since one year to fly with me. You have no time for this, but it's still possible to... We will do that. Okay, thank you, <laughs> Looking Luis. forward. But really no, it's possible uh -huh. to buy an, an electric aircraft today with yeah. a little bit less than one hour of flight. Mm -hmm. uh, and to learn, there is some school in France, in Switzerland, that you mm -hmm. did, not all, but you can do about 80% of your license with an electric aircraft. Wow, that's nice. That's it's really a big nice. Step. Yeah. It's a big it's step. It's a big step. It's a big step. And uh, these, these airplanes are available. So if you compare the cost, if I want to buy an airplane, a little airplane, if I'm a private pilot, um, if I buy a conventional airplane or an electric airplane, is electric airplane, I assume, is much more expensive, no? I don't think so. I think it's almost the same cost. Mm -hmm. Of oh, course, yeah? you, you cannot yeah. have a second hand. At the moment, uh -huh. you need uh -huh. to buy a new one. But if you compare, I think it's almost the same cost. The difference, of course, the range with an electric aircraft, it's much below than what you can get with a normal aircraft. This yeah. is the big things. Yeah. But the cost when you when you fly, it's then probably uh, 10 times cheaper than when you fly with a normal aircraft with, wow. uh, that wow. is using fuel. That's really nice. So it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a big thing. So having fun flying around and even saving money is possible today with electric aircraft. We can buy today an electric uh, car, we can buy an electric bicycle, we can buy uh, an electric boat and we can, you can buy an electric uh, aircraft. So yeah. this is a big difference, Luis. You know, when we were in 2007 together, it was even impossible to buy an electric car. Yeah. And yeah. it was impossible to charge. You have to yeah. go to the bar or to the fire station. Maybe you remember this yeah. to yeah. charge uh, the car. Yeah. But today it's possible to buy everything on electric. Yeah. Could Instead. you, did you dream of that already 15 years ago? Could you imagine that you're going to have a solar airplane, you're going to fly around with it 15 years ago? I am a little bit crazy. So I was thinking that it was probably even uh, going faster than what yeah. we have today, yeah. but we have to admit that we are going quite fast with, uh, yeah. with yeah. this uh, transition. Raphael, a real pioneer, a real adventurer, a promoter and ambassador for solar energy. I'm very happy to see you again. Uh, Raphael, I wish you all the best on your future adventures. So you say the stratosphere flight will be in 2025? 2024. 2024. From, yeah. from. But also, uh, Luis, thank you for you, uh, for all you friends that are uh, today with us. It's the first interview of Solar Butterfly. Yeah. I love what you are doing. Uh, it's another uh, way of promoting solar energy and electric car. Thank you for what you do with your team, with your people that they are supporting you. Uh, that's really nice how you spread this message around the world. We need everyone to change. Yeah. And you are also, all of you, pioneer. And thank you to, to be in this adventure and to, uh, to help us to, to change this, this planet. We have to do yes. it. Yes, thank you very much for your kind words. Thanks a lot, Raphael, for your time that we have been able to be here. Ladies and gentlemen, I could tell you much more for hours and hours. Um, I would love to hear more stories. I'm sure you would also love to hear lots of more stories from Raphael Domjean. Um, uh, we are now here in the military air force base in Bayern. We are now heading to Geneva for the official start of the solar butterfly tomorrow on the Place des Nations in Geneva at United Nations. Follow us on this channel, on YouTube, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Instagram. Um, hashtag meet Larzo, that's us. Find more information on www.solarbutterfly.org and see you soon. Thanks, Raphael. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Luis. Thanks. Bye-bye. See you soon. Bye-bye.